agbara 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 yipo agbara the almighty god come on to us the power that is in stock in his infinite mercy unto each and every one of us in jesus name Amen. let's thank god father we thank you for bringing us again to your presence Father, we bless you, Lord. We worship you, we glorify you, your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the Lord and change it not. We bless your holy name for bringing us again to your presence, Lord, tonight. You come as God in your work. We ask, Lord Jesus, through your work, to be part greatly in the name of Jesus. Santa Calabar. In the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Because you are good to us. Father, as we gather again tonight to study the world, we pray that the world to come down unto our lives. Amen. You bless us in your word. Amen. You be all of you, Lord, Amen. and none of us. Amen. We pray of the Father, Amen. of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say to yourself tonight, tonight. the Lord will bless me mightily. The Lord will bless me mightily. So show everything for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our hand out. We are on part 56 on the Uncle Teaching, the Serving Churches. In our other place, can we read the text that we have? taking notice of them. The lesson learned is that if you too would abide in Christ, he will take notice of you and also abide with you because he's a God of justice and righteousness. Our God is a God of justice. God that we serve is a God of righteousness. We will pay everyone according as his work shall be. For this I choose to know along, go back to the road and pass again. That's a bad life. John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. Abide in me, this is the word of Christ, and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Have you ever seen a tree that is not in the vine, that is not planted, and started bringing fruit? What would the tree be? How does it look if it's cut down, if it's, it's not attached to the ground? Thank you. The tree will die. So if Jesus Christ said, except we abide in him and be fine, then we will not produce anything. He said, no more can ye. 
just like the tree that does not abide in the fire. He said, except ye abide in me, if we abide in him, we will produce. If we don't abide in him, we will not produce. He said, I am divine. Let's jump our hand for Christ. He said, I am divine. God bless you. He said, I am divine. This is what I was born that said this. He said, I am divine. Ye are the branches. So, Let's use this look up, everybody. Amen. Amen. This is a tree. This is a root. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen. You see, in the tree, Hallelujah. Amen. You know what is defined, right? Tam Okay? Okay? Fine. Like a garden, you know, where God, you know, puts you the land, your own land. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, In my own garden, the divine. Okay? So, so now, look, this is the tree. This is like a tree, right? And uh, Hallelujah. They begin to have branches. This tree is in the vine of God. And he said, He is the vine. We are all branches. the branches that grow from it. But he asks us to abide. He wants us to be in the vine. Is that if we don't do that, is that we cannot produce except we abide. Is that I am divine, he are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him. The same is the one that brings forth not fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Is that right? There without him. So we learn last week that Jesus Christ promised those that have not defied their garments in the church of studies that they will work with him in what garment. Isn't it what we learn? The same comfort message go to all those that faithfully follow after Christ's commandment in all the churches presently active in the world today. Those that will not allow deadness in their life, because there are a lot of deadness, like the people in the Church of Salis, that their life is taken in Christ. Their position in Christ has come to perpetual end by their deadness. Their branches have been cut off from the vine. There ain't no more good, but reduced to dry bone. But I declare by the grace of God, if anyone listen to me that I'm dry, the power of God will resuscitate you. Amen. And you will become life again in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that will not allow deadness in their life, the Bible says, they we walk with Christ in what coming in heaven when Christ shall come. Because that is the promise that Christ came unto them. And I would say there was few people in the church of Sardis that they have not get themselves corrupted. We learn that the reward promise for all the concurrent Christians in the church of Sardis and for all those that are serving God faithfully until the end, are clearly written in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. Can you read that? Somebody shout hallelujah. Read the last paragraph. 
by the scam of the end. Look at the children of this world. They are so wise. Even more than the people as they give themselves to children, uh, give themselves to, to Christ. We have to be wiser than the enemy. Because the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. One of his devices is to shift our attention away from Christ. But we know that our God is a right of God that he will apportion unto everyone according as his work shall be. And he want to meet heaven. You have to be diligent in seeking the way of God. It's a hard work. It's not easy. And God will not come down to do that for you. The grace has already been released. For those that thirst and hunger for righteousness, they shall be all. It's automatically there. This is the word what God said. The Bible says, Elijah is a man like us. Make yourself a man, a woman of prayer, and you will wrought miracle. Make yourself somebody that is obedient to the word of God, and you will see miracle per second per second. People that explain that they didn't go and steal it. They work for it. But the obedience in Christ. And your own come will come in Jesus' name. Amen. When your obedience is complete, there is a settlement. There is a grace. There is endowment of power. And this we have to get it right when we are working with God early. So that we're not going to just be bushing again, you know, just running extra character. No, there is a time and there is a season that a reward is coming. And when the reward comes, nobody can stop anything. We're going to see here yeah, in the church of Philadelphia that we are going to go. Hallelujah. When God is ready to manifest himself in your life as his faithful children, nobody, no, even the devil cannot stop, cannot stop him. Because it's God. I declare, your own reward you will not miss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we have to be diligent in practical holiness. Holiness. What is holiness? Holiness simply means obedience to the word of God. That's all. The summary of holiness. Um, of holiness. Just obey, follow what he asks you to do, and you'll be holy. What did I say? That's it. But the devil will come to you and suggest to you, no, that word is not possible. That is why you need to be diligent. The Bible says, resisting the devil and the devil will walk, he will flee. He's a coward. The devil is a coward. The devil is a coward. Oh, Johnny, you have to resist it. You know? And you find out that, hello, have you noticed? Have you noticed that when the church, when the people are dancing and when they are you know, every the program is going on in the church. Have you noticed that whenever the word of God starts, you will see so, there is no, it's not about minister now. A pastor can be preaching fire. It doesn't really matter. When the word, the blessing, when the word of God, you see that a lot of people begin to break their hearts. They started struggling. They have to fight the good fight of faith for them not to sleep. And you want, the devil want, he doesn't want you to hear what you want to hear to set you free. That is just it. I'm not talking to somebody. But if you are not ready to struggle and resist the devil, you find yourself snoring while other people are getting blessed. If you're right there in your present, it's a delicate walk. And some people who can get even offended when, when us and say, Brother, you are sleeping. The first thing they say, I will, I'm not sleeping. They start a lie there. And the devil begins to say, ah ah, God, even in your own presence, he says something, is telling lie. And the devil, the, de the angel come, and the, the angel come and give him, say, the devil says, mm, he's a liar. Right there, in the presence of God. How often we get, we miss this great miracle, because we are not diligent enough. For you to seek God, and follow peace with all men. 
is delicate work. And it's a way of holiness. If you want to make heaven, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no one can see the law. Not you, not me, not anybody. It's a diligent work. So we must be diligent if we want to make heaven. So those people in the church of Sardis, in the church of Sardis, that kept themselves on spot there, just like you too, you must be able to keep yourself with all diligence for you not to be marked with spots of lust. And I said, come sit down here. Come and sit down here. You, you, sit down here. With spots. About one. About one, when you wear a white garment and there is a little, you know, uh, stay. It will clearly see. Holiness is like a white garment. Whenever you allow spot of corruption, it will clear. It will clearly see. And people will notice that spot even more than the white garment. Am I talking to somebody? Because that one will destroy the beauty of the of the of the of the white. And that is why whenever you see. A red oil uh, when you are eating and then there is a stain in your clothes, you go to go and walk and wash it because it will it will disable the beauty. The righteousness of God is our biggest pride. Pride that destroys a lot of people. People, pride, out of them. And the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haunted spirit. Before you fall. These are the things that precede before you fall, before you backslide, before you don't have any interest in the things of God. You will be, I too know, I'm familiar, I'm familiar with God. I, 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 that is not my world, you know. I, I, I can't bear it. So look at the way I'm older than him, like the way he is talking to me. Even when the problem is just advising you in the word of God. These are the problem that has turned a lot of people backward. And you know what? God is a righteous judge. Now, we have to be careful. And then with this lust of idolatry, we have to be diligent. Hello? You know, they say you come and join the property scene because they want to give you work. And then you will agree. Then let me just get this work, and later I'm going to ask God for forgiveness. Idolatry. That means that you love work. We love connection more than Christ. Look, God is a judge and a righteous judge that knows that you are deceiving yourself. Why do you deceive yourself? Because the Bible says, if you fail to obey what you know, you are deceiving yourself. We will not deceive ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. And then from this present war is what we need. Now, when you finish rightly, when you find the good fight and you make it to heaven, there is no more battle again. All the battle, all your hard work and labor to make heaven is only in this present world. And that's why we have to be delicate. For the time period that we're going to be in this world to live every day like Christ is coming. I go for what? We learn that anyone who faithfully follow after Christ is a conquering Christian who kept the faith and fought a good fight. Yeah, no, net. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven and eight. Can you read it, please? I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have finished my course. Uh huh. I have kept the faith. Uh huh. And so, there is a day of for me. You are. Crown of righteousness, crown of doing things right. And well, let's go. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, the Lord, the righteous judge, the world, shall give me at that day. Here is somebody that knew that is the part of as near. Relationship with God can make God to tell you the day that you don't exist from this world. He knew it. And he saw his crown. He said, this is my crown. It's the crown of righteousness. They have been laid down for me. Godly written it down. It's not that he said. He wrote it down by himself. 
Let's clap for the Lord. You know, it is a good it is a good thing, God bless you. It is a good thing to have relationship with God. Not just say religion, religion. Who oh, what are you? I'm a Christian, I do Christian religion. No, Christianity is a personal relationship. Christ has to know you, you have to know Christ. Communicate to you and come. You know, this is what's going to guarantee you success. You're working with God. The Bible goes for that. It says, I'm not to me only. This is where I get interested. And you will love this. But all to all then also the law is appearing. How do you know? People that want Christ to come. That do they say, Christ don't come. I don't want you to come. That's when you know that's a problem. You are not aspiring to see Christ. You will not have a relationship with him here on earth. You don't want to be far away and far away and far away from God. Don't let the devil deceive you. You have to love the appearing of Christ. Christ. When would you come? Am I talking to somebody? Pray. You know what the Bible says? God has shortened the time because of the elect. It is a good thing for you to aspire to see Christ. You know, all the enjoyment you think you enjoy from in this world is nothing to be compared with Christ. Enjoyment. And we can see it. The rich man get there into in the in the air and he was able to see paradise. Is it written in your Bible? Mm -hmm. Or are you reading it with a different height than mine? Hallelujah. Amen. He saw paradise. And he saw a poor wretched Lazarus there and John, and he saw his company. His company of the of the poor man was Abraham. And the Bible says, in which the whole world, the whole, all the whole head, will be blessed by you. That is how rich this Abraham was. He was so rich, so he was in the company of the richest of the richest. Abraham. For the rich man to know that power past power, riches past riches. He saw Abraham. He said, Father Abraham, just allow Lazarus to just dip his finger and come and ah, it's only a big war. We cannot pass from there. Even though this Lazarus wants to say, I mean, he was eating from the crumbs so that fell off from his table. He could actually, it was his neighbor. He could actually help him. But there was a fence. The, the barrier between them was because Lazarus was a faithful child of God, but he was poor. So riches does not guarantee you go to heaven. Don't get it wrong. Relationship with your God guarantee you everything. And the more you live here on earth, the more faithful you are, is the more reward you will get in heaven. That was why Jesus Christ said, forget about laying your treasure here on earth. Lay your treasure in heaven. We are moved. Where there's no canker one, no caterpillar to destroy. Exactly as you say, as you stay there, it's going to be there. And look, all the time that you are put in, in the service of God here on earth, is being recorded in heaven. All your giving, your penny worth, your thousand, your hundred, your one dollar, is being recorded here. Let me tell you, all the prayer of love, your soul winning, walk, your, your good counsel, counseling the brethren, when the brethren have some issue, that you go there, you counsel them, your prayer of love, it's very strong. And when there is a council in heaven, when the devil wants to wreck his or her ugly act, who, whatever form the devil might be, God will intercede and say, and no, it's a no. It is God that gives God good life. You have God, the God that gives long life. It's the God that gives prosperity. The God that gives honor, good earth belongs to God. 
And whatever he chooses to do, and nobody can question him. I declare you get this right in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. So everything we desire, end on earth, the grass wither, the flower fails, the word of God stands forever. It is his will that will come to pass. Because he said, I will do all my pleasure and perform all my counsel. I pray that the Lord will grant unto us this wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we will make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us know the appearing of Christ. We learn that it is highly beneficial for you to put your attention unto the warning and instruction that is in the word of God for your own good. It is for your own good. So my own good. Revelation chapter 3, verse what does he say? He that are and hear, that's the stand of what the word. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto them. So it's a which will blow up. And just one more song, good again. So let's move now to the church of Philadelphia. You will enjoy this one. Well, <laughs> the best of the best church. Hallelujah. Amen. We are done five churches all together in Tato, the church of Ephesus, Senior, Pagamo, Tratra, and Sardis. Now we shall start the teaching of the church of Philadelphia today. I pray that God will open our understanding to understand this beautiful, commendable church of Philadelphia in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The church of Philadelphia is the sixth church. That the Lord Jesus of Christ we uh, requested that the apostle John below write unto for them to know their status in God. The church of Philadelphia was also in the city of Asia Manu, seated upon the border of Messia and Libya, present day Turkey. Philadelphia is listed at the sixth church of the seven in Asia Manu. A letter specifically addressed to the Philadelphia church is recorded in Revelation chapter 3, 7 to 13. We're going to read it, but I'm going to take it one after the other in the next uh, uh, teaching. Hallelujah. Let's go and read, it, read it, the, all, the, all the verses that relate to Philadelphia. Let's go. And to the angels of the church in Philadelphia arise, this thing is said, he that is holy. Who is holy? Jesus Christ. And what? He that is what? True. Who is what? Who is true? Jesus. And what? He that has the key of David. Who has the key of David? Jesus. Jesus Christ. As then when the Pharisee asked, from that day, the Bible says they didn't ask him any questions no more. They asked the Pharisees. You know? I mean, the most respected king he was David. And David, in the spirit. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down until I make your enemy your host. He said, so if uh, David called him Lord, how is it now that he's the son of David? From that day, the Bible says, the Bible says, they has many more questions because they don't know how to handle that. Because from their Torah, they couldn't see, they read it, but they couldn't know the baby anymore. So they started to come, I will move like, wow. I don't want to be. Somebody said, hallelujah. So he said, I'm the one that even had the key of David. And let's go. He that was open. And what? And no man shot. Okay. I am the one that opened no one shot. And what? And so that no man can open. He that had that key of David. Sing with me. He that had that key of David. He that opened. And no man shot. He that shot. He that shot. So, 
He said, I know thy word, behold, I have sent before thee an open door. Because he's the one that has the key in his hand. And no man can walk, shut it. For thou hast what a need to strength. We're going to get there. We're going to enjoy this. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This job, they have what a need to strength. They were not like those big, big churches that they call likely like the church of Sardis. When they see, they say, this is a very great church, lovely church. Go to that church. You'll find that the church is lovely. This is the thing. When you look at their choir, it's lovely. Even the message of the pastor is what well, nice. you will laugh to scorn. Hallelujah. You know, the usher, they always put themselves in good shoes and their tire, they were very lively. You would love to go there. And there's nothing wrong in all those commendations. The problem was that Jesus Christ said eh, that church was dead. But look, the church of Philadelphia, Jesus Christ said, eh, they have for a little strength, very fragile. But in all this, they are more than conquerors. Because Jesus Christ commit them. I'm going to open door for you. Somebody hand me today, the Lord will open up for you. Amen. And no one will be able to shock in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, John, beloved, was a man with little strength. It's not like, you know, you know, Foka, like, uh, you know, Peter, even like Paul. John was easily going, gentle, and always raised at the bosom of I love this surprise. And the grace was still with him. There was somebody that they tried to kill, they couldn't kill. They even put him in a hot, hot, hot oil to fry him like a plantain. The oil become like a ice water. Just like the fire became like, the furnace became like a higher condition. For certain people, can have any good. This is the power of Christ. He outlived the rest of the disciples, but was very, very, is very fragile. And when he want to communicate to the Church of Philadelphia, he talked to them. He said, "If you the Church of Philadelphia, you have little strength." And what? And what? He said, "And has kept my word." Look at this. He said, "This church, the good thing you have is that you have kept the word of God. You kept my word." You catch my word and walk and has not denied my faith. I wish all the churches of the world can be like that. Even though when the church is not mega church, even when the church is like two or three gather, you are very fragile. You don't have enough money to even finance your project. God said, what you really need to do is to keep my word. Don't deviate from my word. These are the church that we have an open door because it's the God that do it. He almost you say, he said, you kept my word, you have not denied my name. With your little strength, he said, go for that person. Be all, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> we say they are Jews. I don't know. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before that feet. <laughs> Somebody says, Hallelujah. He said, those people that brag themselves that we are Jews, so we are the ones that have God at our disposal. We are our only priests. We can want to be. We don't want to generate you like that. Hallelujah. They were very, 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 very robust. And they call themselves Jew because they are the ones that they believe that they know the creed. They believe that the one that the one that have the Jesus Christ said, Look, though you are very small, you don't have the strength, you are very uh, you know, you know, you are lonely. He said, Look, all those people that 
believe that they are very mighty. And then they call themselves Jews. Eh? I will make them to come to your presence about that. And come and worship. Somebody said hallelujah. Mm -hmm. At their feet. To know that I have loved thee. Now, when God loved you, let me tell you, it will even turn your enemy to become your world, your friend. This is the power of Christ. Because the one that did it is the one that finished it on the cross of Calvary, And he gives to anyone who comes to him faithfully. He gives them the reward. He said, I'm going to give you a great anointing. Even with your little strength, people that are mighty are coming. People that say, look, I am a Hebrew. I am a Jew. But the Bible says they line up because what they're supposed to be identified as the Jew. Or a lot of you come and walk and come and say to make them to say, I am a Jew, really. They lied. They didn't do it. They were a liar. But he said, look, they are coming to you to come and worship at your feet. Because I am the one that have that power to do it. Because I've loved it. The Lord will love you in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. You are very patient. You are not in rush. You don't want the microwave oven. And microwave uh, miracle. We are other churches are going expecting that to the unbeliever and corrupt their mind and become an idolatry worshiper. And the devil gives some of them power and dictate to them what they will say or what they will not say. They actually take the word of God from them and give them feeble. They give them the word of the devil. The Bible says, at the last day, a lot of people will depart from the faith and turn to the doctrine of the devil. This is what Jesus Christ was hammering and commanding the church of Philadelphia that they were not like that. And that is why those people that are liars are still coming back into their feet to learn the true word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because they, kept, they are very patient. This church are very patient. Because you kept the word of my patience, that I am coming, you wait for me. He said that I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. So try them that dwell upon the earth. Say, when trouble is coming to the world, because this church, you are very faithful to my world, you get my world, I will keep you in the time of temptation. When other people are falling, my strength will be for you. Though you don't have strength, I will make myself a strength for you. I will give you strength from above so that you can live above sin and sorrow. I declare that strength for every one of us. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes for that. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, that fast which thou hast, that no man will take it from you. He said, He said, It's coming quickly. He said, That church to hold fast works in have that great integrity that they have that nobody take their crown from them. Somebody said hallelujah. Can you read fast well? Let me hear you fast well and I'll go. Let party, let's read it together. Yeah. He that had that here, yeah. let him hear yeah. what the Spirit says yeah. unto the church. So, the name of the church, let's start from here. The church, speak for me, Philadelphia. Because Philadelphia means war, brotherly love. In Greek language. And in ancient Greek language, that word is derived from Greek term, dear, bro, dear beloved, or brother and brotherly. Do we see that? No wonder the church adopted the term brothers and sister in Christ. It is a good term for those who are truly in Christ Jesus to call. You know, I said, 
brother and sister in Christ. Because Philadelphia Church is a good example of a sound church that practicalizes the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, on earth. It is good for us to follow after good things, isn't it? It is bad for us to follow after bad things. When we know something is demonic, something is not right, the church will not follow it. Hallelujah. They will follow it because of the reward of the gain of the monetary or popularity or faith. Then we are wrong. Because the person that will reward us is faithful. And faithful is you that call us, is the one that can give us the glory that we need if we want to serve him as he please. But we can do whatever we want to do. As man, we may not please him. Until we choose to please him, then the reward will come. Philadelphia Church has a green light, even from the meaning of our wonderful name, brotherly love, for which it was eminent roundabout, a renowned name for good work in Christ Jesus. Philadelphia Church, a church with positive quality. You too, you have positive quality in Jesus' name. Amen. Philadelphia Church, a church so famous and respected with our profession. They were faithful followers of Christ with integrity and Christ commend them for their quality. Quality. Is what matter, not quantity. It's not how many you are in your church. It's our quality, the good quality church. Jesus Christ only have how many disciples? Twelve. And eleven of them were quality. Hallelujah. Then when you have hundred uh, disciples and eleven were quality, do you see the difference? Fraction. Look at the ratio. Out of uh, twelve, the eleven was was really good. And what was bad? Ah, if I have that kind of a church, I will thank God. Am I talking to somebody? It, it's, <laughs> it's hard for you to have that kind of a church. But these are the church that God wants us to have. Quality church. Let's go for that. Uh, where am I? Second for that, right? Huh? Okay. How are we that all churches will be like the church of Philadelphia. We may hardly suppose that this name was given to this church after conversion to Christian faith. Christianity has a great affection for all, and it should be like that because our Master and Lord Jesus Christ died because of the love He had for us. He died for our sin on the cross of Calvary, that we may all we may be saved. In the book of John 15, that's what does he say? Really, let me hear you. Praise the Lord. For a friend, because they call us friends, they call us companions. If we will, will obey him. We are the follower of Jesus Christ, our one family. Isn't it? Am I not your family? Wow. Are you not my family? Yeah. We are brothers and sisters. We are from the same family. We are joined here together in the kingdom because I will see you in heaven and you will see me. Amen. We all believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is the great reward, the great blessing for us to be together forever. Never to part no more. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, Uh, we, the follower of Jesus Christ, our, our family, we are joined together in the love of Christ. It is the bond of Christ that bond us together. We should dwell in love and affection. We should love ourselves. Jesus Christ said, we have to love God and then love our neighbor as well as ourselves. You know, we know that we are now Christ-like. We are now a church member. Our love is supposed to be more, you know, uh, you know, close. We should be, we should put ourselves in somebody's ass shoe. Over the Kawalara or Rwanda, I'm going to say it, Kawalara. That's a good church, that's the sign of a good church. You know, uh, one of our father in the law preached, was sitting one day, and he said he had a bike. 
coming, marching, you know, marching or coming. He has back, motorcycle. And uh, the, his roommate was the one that was walking. You know I mean? So the person that bought the bike, it doesn't go anywhere. He's a pastor. So uh, was he? I, I don't know. Yeah. But the person that was that was walking was the one that taking the bike to work. <laughs> he said, can we find that kind of uh, affection in this in this uh, in this present day with everything? You are not the owner of the car. <laughs> and you are taking the car to work and coming back and then you are, you are, you are happy. You find out that in this Christianity of this day, they will complain. I'm not going to somebody. I bet if only you don't have only you I don't think it's kind of impossible. <laughs> so, but look to see how far the church has shifted because of self centeredness. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. We should we should bring this brotherly love for the thing, not by mouth, but by action. Mm. By action. You know, when a brother when you cannot trust a brother. Hallelujah. Amen. When you cannot, you cannot, you know, that let's say a brother stand for you, do a shopping for you, for a bank. Let me, you know what I'm saying? You want to take a loan, you don't have a good credit, and then you say, come and help me. And then you don't, and you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not paying. You mess up his credit. Am I, am I talking to somebody? He to speak for you. It's because you don't put yourself in that shoe. Am I talking to somebody? You know, uh, you know, one of my house, you know, not too long ago, I left it for somebody. And when you want to move in, destroy a new floor. A new floor. Come on. I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, because, because it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a wrong, wrong uh, mentality. Hello? You know, some people, when they don't pay for utility, you know how they use it? They just run it like that. Until they started paying utility, they find out that, what, is it like this? Am I talking to somebody? Put yourself in other people's, you know what I'm telling you? It's not because I'm a pastor, it's not because I'm a landlord, it's not because, because I'm not everywhere. It's the fact that if you really love your brother, you will want to make sure that you take care of him, of her, in all it. Because my car is your car, your car is your car. I wouldn't see, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't leave your toilet without offering me your life. I'm not talking to somebody. I wouldn't, you know, you, you know, uh, there was another house that they turn the air condition on, and uh, the people in the basement, they turn the heat on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because none of them pay war, pay the bills. It doesn't make no sense. But these, they will now find out that when they have their own, they find out that, wow. And some of them know that this is what we are doing. It's not, now when you know something that is right and you didn't do it, then there is a condemnation from your heart that you have not done the right thing. The funny thing that you don't know is that God is keeping record of everything that you did that is wrong and everything that you did that is right. And there's going to be a reward for it. And a lot of people pray. I pray and pray. They find out that heaven is not opening. What about the wickedness that you are? And brotherly love can help you. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody shout a little and communicate. Hallelujah. Now, because everything that you saw, you are, you will weary. Let, let me move from there. Let me move from there. Uh, the Bible go for that. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a greater love that no one that did that, a man laid down his life for his friend. And if I'm your brother, if I'm your sister, I'm what? I'm your friend. Hallelujah. Because a friend is even closer than a brother. Hallelujah. In Christ, if anything happens to you, before you tell your brother, it is your, 
brother, uh, your, your, your blood brother, it is your brother in Christ that we first know. Am I talking to somebody? They are closer than your, even your blood brother. And that is why you need to love them. And they need to love us. So now, let's dwell in love. We should arise for the help of one another as the children of one father that is joined together in Jesus Christ. In Psalm 103, look at this. I'm going to end with this and then we're going to, I'm going to open the floor if there is any question. Psalm 103, verse 13 to, uh, to 18. What does it say? Like a father pitieth. Is what? It's all children. Now, what does he say? If you have a relationship with God, God have pity. He pity you. Unlike when you are not his own child. When you don't have a relation with your with your father, we don't have a relation with Christ. There is no pity. Do you know it's out of pity that he said, Peter, enemy, want to shift you as well as a wheat, but I have prayed. Before the thing happened, he said, I have prayed for you. Because he know that this Peter loved me. There was a time he asked Peter, he said, Do you love me? He said, I love you. He asked Peter again, Do you love Peter? Son of a do you love me? He said, Uh uh, you know that I love you. He asked me again, Peter, do you love me? He said, Ah uh ah, -uh. you know everything. I don't need to, I don't need to tell you. You know everything. And you know that you are, that I love you. And what was the answer that Jesus Christ now gave me? He said, feed my sheep. Man, that was so wrong. And that is why, that was why Peter and the rest of the, of the, of the, uh, uh, of the red and close to, they give all the work of the uh, of the sanctuaries and all the things that they give to to the rest of the member. The Bible says they only are looking to teach the word and the prayer. That's all they do. Because it was being abiding by the rules and the commandments of Christ. He said, feed my sheep, feed them. Feed them. And last week. I talk about that when Peter said, "You, I, you know, I know that you know all these things, but it is, it is laid on me. It's my remedy for me to remind you and to tell you the quality of the character of those people that we made it: virtue, faith, patience, endurance, all kind of virtue that we need to have ourselves with for us to make them. He said, "We have this." We will not fail. But if we don't, it's a failure. Me and you will not fail. Amen. So, is that, is that what say? As a father pity his own children, so the Lord will pity them that fear him. The quality reward that God has are for those people that fear him. It's a quality one. He pity them. He pray for them. He gives to them blessing that their power and their wisdom cannot get. It's out of the pity. He pet them. You know how you how you pet your own uh, you know. You know how you pet your own uh, you know. Oh, to look, oh, do, oh, for to die, oh, 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 my dear phone. Thank you, Larry. You okay? Yeah. What do you want? You want me? I'm telling you. Okay. Okay. I'm my because they were, you know, they are petting him. God also do that. You know, when you are wife and you have a relationship with your father, if God will just make a way. One way or the other, for him to accredit unto you exactly what you desire. That's why I said the desire of the righteous shall be established, it shall be granted. Because it is God. He pitied them, he pets them, 
He grant unto them every good thing. That's why he said, ask it shall be given to you. For everyone that asks, he said, if you and evil know how to give good gift sure. to your own children, how much more God will he not give you unto you everything that you ask him? But it will only for those people. He do that part for those people that work, that fear in. The rest of the people, a sinner prayer is like a backing door. In fact, the prayer of a wicked person or people that don't know God is an abomination before God. Because when you go, he really when you alone. So, he said, for in no air our frame. When you fear the Lord, God knows your frame. When you put the fear of God, he you knows your frame. He you knows that you are a sinner. It is the fear of God that make God for pity you and greet unto you credit. It's a matter of heart desire. God, I just want to do your way. And then he will make a way for you. God will make a way in the wilderness. What you think you cannot do, the grace of God in the wilderness will prevail and make you to do it because the grace has been sufficient. It's just a willingness that I want to fear God. And that the Lord will provide and will make a way. He said, He remember that we were all that we are dogs. Look, it was not a funny thing. What did I say? It was not a funny thing. When Abraham carried a knife, he took a knife and look at that thing. He put a wood, firewood, carry his own son, tie his own son. Okay? And there is no record that Isaac was struggling. Look at that thing. There was a son that he waited for 100 years for. He prayed, and God told him, I will give you, I will make all your children like the sand of the sea. And he only gave him one. Now, of the confidant, he said, this one. He said, yeah, he said oh, what do I want to say? Oh, no, nanny, I want you to give me your own son, the one that you are. That you love. So be one me. When you only let the kidney, to find out. So come on, Lord Moon, it's my God. So I want to give you a son. Oh, it's my God. He said, No, he said the one that you are, that you love. Look at that thing. So he took his own son that he loved. He put firewood. He laid his son down there and he carried a knife. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Put yourself in that category. And all because he just want to obey God because he fear God. And don't know what. So when when he wants to do that, God said, no. Do you know what happened? Inside of Abraham, he has killed Isaac because of the love that he had. I will tell you that a lot of people will never do that. They will say, it's not the voice of God. It's the voice of God said, I am evil. God said, ah, ah, it's not you. It's the devil. <laughs> I might not know somebody. So, God said, because you have not denied your only son, because God can. He didn't say it. He said, because your only son. That's it. He made that one. He said, oh, man. He said, look at that one. Because that was the son that God reckoned with. That they're going to make his promise with. He said, in blessing, I will Stop, stop. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiply, I will multiply you. And what? And I will make all, you know, your, you know, the sun now bless. And I will multiply like the sun of the sea. So, and then he begin to bless him. He said, bless that those that bless you, cause and those that walk, that cause you. Through you, all the family of the earth, that will be called, you do not deny me of your son, your only son. And uh, look, that was a walk that is worthy of revelation. Look, I'm not saying go and kill your child. God will not require anybody's children. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, Hallelujah. He will not. He has given unto us this cry and has sacrificed once and all and for all. The same thing that God asked for Abraham, it was the same thing that God did. He gave this cry for God so loved the world. Hallelujah. And, well, and gave his own beloved. Begotten Son, that whosoever will believe in him will, will, will not perish, but I will have a The same thing, he said, 
Abraham, this is exactly what I want to do. For me to show my love for you. For the whole world. So, the Bible goes for that. For as the wind passes over it, and it's going, and it's gone, and the plague thereof shall eat no more, but the mercy of the Lord is what? Is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that walk that fear him. It doesn't only it doesn't end only on Abraham, not on Isaac, not on Jacob, but upon everyone that fear him. That, that, that fear him. He said, and is what righteousness unto children, children, unto the children of those people that follow Christ. He said, to show us as keep his covenant. And to those that remember his commandment to do them. Look at that. So, you know, in our communication, you find out that it's always good for us to obey the word of God. The Lord has well prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rule over all. I put the stop, put stop today. Continue next week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. After minutes, we talk and answer. Question. Any question? Yes, sir. So, um, I remember that you are talking about being diligent. Yes. Then you are being talking about being diligent. I think we are like, maybe like, they like, like, they like helping others, and like, being like, um, like, friendship and like other. Yeah. Like, so like, in what things, like, do you think, like, what category of things? Is it like, in spiritual things, and like, physical? Like, Everything. Either physical or spiritual. It doesn't really matter. Spiritual matter. If you know that your brother is in need, you have to help them. Either in any way, in prayer, in giving, in counseling, in the working for them. Meaning that what they can't do, you have to do it for them. Okay? All area that we know that our brother needs help, we have to help them. Either a man or a woman. We need, they need help, we have to help them. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. The Bible says, don't say that we are kept in this world, and I have not denied his name. And uh, one of the talking is uh, Brother Lino. Yes. And if you can see, people like the mid 70s, 90s, maybe early 90s. So you can see that people practice this thing too much. Yes. So, and it affected most of the Christians. What can we say about that uh, kind of uh, and uh, what can be the solution? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I believe because uh, the teaching in the pulpit is shifted from righteousness, faithfulness, love. You understand? Love and uh, you know, you know, holiness, obedience to the word of God. The it is shifted to idolatry. So, you know, prosperity, you know, greediness, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, for, for many pastors in the, in, the, in, the, in the month, they talk more about how you can, you know, make more money, you know, you know, you know, you know, just people are not granted. People are not, they, they don't have, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, I love to go to Sunday school. We come early, we go to Sunday school, we learn Sunday school. And now in today's church, people may not love to come to Sunday school, even though they want to come to Sunday school. They come late. So, and when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, we, we actually memorized 26 verses of every week Sunday school. And then they would give us the prize that we can recite that 26 at the road. So, if you remember that 26, they give you a price. You know, some people even can do more, just like that. The recitation. People don't have the time no more because they want to go and work. You understand what I'm saying? Even <laughs> some people, some parents, they advise their children to study, not even the Bible, but the academic. So it's like everything is just being shifted to the things 
of the world, and that affects the church. Because if you do this and I do that, we find out that the community of a church is not one person, it's me and you, that we have the same similar vision, and we are doing that in our own, you know, in our own family. And when we come together, we find that the church of God begins to exhibit the thing that we are doing the prophet. So people that they, they, are, they are not uh, equipped in the prophet of their home, when they come, they like look more. And then the lukewarm gathering of lukewarm gather together, there's not going to be firebrand. One after the other, the church is being reduced in the realm of the, of the spirit. And the carnality is like, is, is prevailing. So, and I will also say that right now, even the few people that like the church of science that are faithful, now they look at the overwhelming majority that carry the fault of maybe of idolatry, they too they want to be like them. This is the problem. This is the problem that the church is facing. But look, this is not new because it's already been prophesied that at the latter day, okay, many will depart from faith. They will love the teaching of the devil. They will still be coming to church. They don't love the teaching of the devil, the teaching that were not sound. Because Many will be confectious, you say, because many will be what? Confectious. And the love of many will wax cold. The love of Christ will wax cold. So the love that Philadelphia has, this bright love that they have, will wax cold. So there is no willingness, there is no pushing force. I want to do the right thing. I want to do the will of God. I want to, you know, to pray. I want to come to the house of God. That is no. You know, in the church of the act, in the act of the apostles, the Bible said they were having service every day. And the church is being added. Now, if I ask, how many of have given, have shared, you know, have, uh, had, uh, you know, evangelized today? I will not say that. Hallelujah. But you find out that if we see anybody that already there, are maybe one or two, even among yet. And this is how it goes all around. People don't have the zeal like before. But like before, when you enter into a box, you find one or two people standing up and preach about the gospel of Christ. Right now, if they want to buy a to go to the man again. You understand what I'm saying? So, and if they may even be Christian. So, is, this is what is going on in the world right now. Because the love of many has was poor and has been prophesied. So, how. Do we going to save ourselves from it? Let's start back. Let's go back now to the basic individual. We have to go back to individual and say, me, I want to be a fire for, for God. Me, I choose to be only for God. So when I choose to do that, and you choose to do that, and then we gather ourselves together, we see we have a fire branch church. Because the Bible says, iron stagnant for iron. So as the man stagnant, the container of his friend. But if we make our heart to be idolatry, we'll be lukewarm. We'll not have firebrand. We'll be greedy of gay, and we'll be looking and want to be like the people of the world. This is what I brought problem into the church of God. Do you understand, sir? And I pray the Lord will help uh, every church in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Any other question? Okay. If there is no any other question, we're going to call it a day today. Let's stand up on our feet and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father Lord, help me, O oh Lord, give me the grace to be obedient to your word. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give every one of us the grace to be obedient to your word all the days of our life. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Oh, wow. Give me all in my life. Give me body. Give me all. Give me all in my life. And I pray. Hallelujah. Give me all in my life. Give me body. I pray. In the name of 
Lord Jesus. Amen. We pray that you grant unto us all. Amen. Somebody say, Father, Amen. give me all give me into all. my land. Into Let my me heart. keep burning for you. Make me a firebrand. Give me the grace to obey your word. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give me the name of Jesus. Give me the Lord God Almighty. Lord, to be firebrand for you. Tell it to the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Santa Carla, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, give my wife, my children, every one of the church, oh Lord, my Santa Carla, and in Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody say, every evil arrow of the enemy, back to the sender, arrow of us, back to the sender, arrow of lukewarmness, back to the sender, arrow of idolatry, back to the sender, all the abandoned to the sender. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every evil arrow, back to the center, arrow of, of, of evil, of arrow of adolescence, arrow of weakness, arrow of adolescence, arrow of weakness, back to the center, the lack of my life, of my children, and every other little, back to the center, every evil arrow of the enemy, evil arrow, back to the center. In the name of Jesus, and in Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody say, Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, as I come today, I don't want this word to judge me, but this word to justify me. Oh, yeah, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Santa Carla, my Muslim, someone you live a As I come today, Lord Jesus Christ, don't let this word to condemn me, let this word justify me. By the grace and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody say, Father, my Lord Jesus Christ. As I'm going now, go with me. When as I come back next week, give me more revelation on it. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said the king in my heart. Lord Jesus Christ, go with me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. More knowledge, more revelation. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Father of our Lord, God, we thank you for tonight's Bible study. Father, as you are going to go with us, Amen. when I don't have your way, why we shall gather again next week for this uh, teaching? Give us more revelation and knowledge. Amen. To the glory of the Father, Amen. of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we share the great fellowship? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. the, the love of God, God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.